What is up? What is going on, everybody? I am back with the Mariners post game recap. Before I get started, I just thank you so much to everybody that's watching these videos. These post games have really, really jumped off uh, for me. Getting a thousand views on some of these just blows me away. I've, you guys have actually helped me get to my channel to the point where I just applied for monetization for my channel. So from the bottom of my heart, thank you guys. Not that that's your concern whether my channel's monetized or not, but couldn't do it without every every single one of you. So truly thank you uh, from the bottom of my heart. I appreciate that. If you are new here, hit that sub button. Whether you're new or not, hit the like button for me. It just helps get the video out to more people. It, it just continues. It just continues with this team. They win their eighth in a row. They beat the Orioles tonight, nine to two. They're 11 games over 500. I said a bit in my last stream, like or in my last post game, how did this happen? How did this team get to 11 games over? I, I guess eight game winning streaks will help you get to 11 games over 500. But just absolutely incredible to see this team where it was. I, I mean, a month ago, making videos so frustrated with this team. And as much as I will still stand by some of those things were frustrating, they hung around just enough to be able to do this, to be able to get to this point. It's why 500 can be frustrating, but they didn't bury themselves. They didn't get four, five, six games under where all that winning streak would have done is get them to two or three games over. They're a half game back at Toronto in the wild card, and the Mariners have played three less games than the Blue Jays. So the Mariners control their own destiny. Now, it's baseball. I mean, most teams kind of control their own destiny. If you win the rest of your games, you're going to be good. But, I mean, they're going to play three games when the Blue Jays have days off. The very good chance the Mariners, you know, you win two of those, you are, you're a game up. And the Mariners have the tiebreaker against Toronto as well with division records. Um, so it's just incredible for this team. And, and there were times I didn't think they were going to do it. I thought they're just too many games back and too many teams to climb, but man, have they done it. They've been impressive. Um, Houston, I believe Texas won too, so they don't gain any ground in the division. I will say this though. You play Houston and Texas enough to possibly make up that ground. Now, not saying they will, there's no guarantee. Houston, Texas are good baseball teams. No guarantee you do make up that ground, but those games are there to be played for you. Toronto, you don't play again. So, you know, you gotta, you gotta, you don't get the, the opportunity to play them to make up those games. But now you don't have any games to make up. I mean, you don't even really need Toronto to lose. You just got to keep winning. Toronto does not have to lose anymore. It would be nice. I'm not saying that, but you just got to keep going with it. So let's get into the box score here. Let's break it down. As I always do, we're going to start with the pitching. Man, Luis Castillo is back to ace form. Uh, six solid innings, two hits, one run, one run. It was on the Santander home run. He has been a Mariner killer now for two series. It's his fourth home run against the Mariners this season. Two walks, eight Ks. Just the, the dominant Castillo this team needs. If this team is going to go far, Luis Castillo is going to be a huge reason why. Kirby's been great. Logan Gilbert has been probably the best pitcher on this team for the last month. Bryce Miller's still doing okay, still doing solid, still getting his strikeouts. Brian Wu should be back soon, and Emerson Hancock had a great debut. But Luis Castillo is the glue to this pitching staff, in my opinion. He's the guy that they absolutely need to be that dominant ace, and everybody else can kind of fall into form behind him. So Alcedo did his job. Uh, Ryder Ryan, congratulations to that young man in his major league debut. Two strikeouts, um, didn't allow a hit, did walk a batter. Congrats to him in his major league debut. And then Trent Thornton finished it up in the ninth inning. Not only is the pitching continuing its run, we've seen how good the starting staff has been. The bullpen has been amazing, and this offense has come to life. I talked about in the Padres series, um, that I thought they had good at-bats. I thought they were getting guys on. They just weren't finishing. Um, and that's okay. Like, you'd rather have that. you got to get in position to score before you can score, you know, unless you're just hitting solo home runs all day. So I didn't think they played too poorly offensively against the Padres. Another thing I want to point out real quick before I get into the offense, another credit to Luis Castillo is how good this Orioles offense is. I mean, Adley Rushman is fantastic. Gunnar Henderson's having a nice year. Santander is good. Oh, Hearn's been great for them. Nick Mullins is, or Nick Mullins. I've got football on the brain still, apparently. Cedric Mullins has been really good. Mountcastle's a good hitter. Even Adam Frazier's got a 722 OPS this year. Um, Urias 714. I mean, th that is a good Orioles offense. Um, and the Mariners absolutely took care of it. 
that they pounded Kyle Gibson tonight. They've done it in both starts against Gibson, both on Friday nights. They uh, beat up Gibson in that Friday game that they played uh, earlier in the year. And I'll say this too. The Mariners have played four games against the Orioles this year, and I believe they have a plus 18 run differential in the four games. Uh, let's get into the offense. Julio Rodriguez, two for four, four RBIs today for Julio. He hits the three-run home run and the RBI double. The home run was Julio's 19th. Man, is Julio back. Man, are we getting last year's Julio. And I've been critical of Julio on here and probably a little unfairly. I mean, the guy's at like four wins above replacement level right now. He's probably going to have a five-war season. He's 22. Julio has been really, really good. Now, has he taken that next ascending step that we want him to take? Not yet, necessarily. But man, Julio is really good. It's amazing what winning does. It's amazing how winning just cures all my frustrations and all our ails about this team. Uh, Gino was one for three with the walk. Uh, Cal one for four, the big home run, his 20th, his team leading 20th home run. He had two RBIs. Tail 0 for three with the walk. Ty France two for four, a base knock, and then a solo home run. Need Ty to turn around. Tao and Ty, to me, are really kind of the, the keys to this team getting going because they're the two guys that are underperforming the most. And if you can get them just to their just to their career averages or something, you've got an offense that's already playing really well, but can go to that next level. And they have it, and I'm not asking for career years. I'm asking for their average, their career averages out of them. Uh, Dom Canzone, one for three with the base hit and a walk. Good game for him. Uh, Cade Marlowe was two for four. Caballero was one for three and had a sack fly. A good sack fly with Ty France on base, so that was good to see. And then good for Josh Rojas, two for four, a double, a single, his first RBI as a Mariner. So really, really good to see from Josh Rojas. Um, I like that trait. I really think Josh Rojas can be a positive addition to this team. The guys had like 13 at-bats this year before tonight. Let's give him a little time before we send him out to pasture here, okay? Give Rojas a few at-bats. He's been a good player in his career. He's battled some injuries this season. Hopefully he's back healthy and, and a nice game tonight for him. And a, a night I think he needed to get his confidence going. So really good to see from Josh Rojas. Like I said, I, I, I think him um, platooning with Cobby or Dylan Moore can be a legitimate second base option. Nice job of the team to win with JP Crawford out. JP went on the seven day IL for concussion, concussion protocol. Um, Sam Haggerty is back. And then Dylan Moore was scratched before the game today. And I didn't quite see what the reason was. Maybe I can, let's check that out and see if there's any update on that. But Dylan Moore was scratched pregame. So hopefully he's okay there. Let's see if we have anything on Twitter or, excuse me, on X about Dylan Moore. Um, you probably won't hear until Scott says something pregame or excuse me, post game. So probably won't hear anything on that right away. But um, yeah, you know, you lose JP. Hopefully it's just for the seven days. I assume that's like five, six games. And it's probably retroactive to yesterday. Um, so, you know, you, you got to bow. JP has been probably the most consistent hitter this year for the team. So hopefully they can battle through that. Hopefully Demo's back and healthy because they with, with JP out, you need Dylan Moore in there. But for today, Caballero did well and Rojas held it down at second base. So Nice job there by the middle infield. I, I don't know what else to say. It's just that this team's on a roll. This team is playing good ball. Let's take a look at the standings real quick. I mean, you guys know it. You know the standings. You know what this team is doing. Um, you know, that their their run diff is up to plus 61 on the season. They're five and a half back still. Texas. Is Texas still playing right now? Let's take a look. Texas is, did they win? They almost, yeah, they won two to one over the Giants. Assuming they won because the Mariners didn't gain any ground. So let's go back to the standings. So you're five and a half back in the division. You're two, you're three back of Houston. I know people are frustrated with that because Texas has also like been playing some really good ball recently. But think how Texas and Houston feel. They're playing great ball and they can't pull away yet from the Mariners. You still play those teams enough. Get to the Texas series four and a half back. Get to Houston two back. Not saying if Texas and Houston fans are watching that, that like, oh, you've got them. But you're in a position, if you can do that, to catch those teams. So just get to those series and try and make something happen there. Wild card wise, yeah, 
0.5 back. I, I mean, and then three back of Houston. Uh, Tampa Bay did have a pretty crazy comeback win today. Would have been nice. They could have gained a game on Tampa. Don't don't dismiss that either with the way this team is playing. But um, And then Boston. Boston's still hanging in there. So is New York. Um, so we'll see what ends up happening there. But, uh, yeah, I mean, just it's been fun. This has been really fun. Regardless of what happens, guys, it's, guys and gals, it's more fun to watch your team win than it is to lose. You know, obvious points being made there, but um, it has been a lot more fun to watch this team. It's been so fun to do these post games. They're going to lose again. I'm, I'm not, and I'm not going to end on a sour note, but th they will eventually lose another baseball game. I'll still be here for it, and we'll get through it together as always. But for right now, enjoy the wins. Um, we were told they couldn't have another 14 game winning streak this year. It was impossible. They're six away. Mariner nemesis Cole Irvin on the mound tomorrow famously called out the lineup in 2021 and then got shut down with them the rest of the way. Hopefully they can go out tomorrow and honor King Felix with a victory. Um, we'll see what happens though. One game at a time. Just take it one game at a time. Maybe a live stream tomorrow. I'll see how I'm feeling. Definitely a post game tomorrow. Everybody enjoy your Friday night. Remember to hit sub. Remember to hit like. I will see you guys all tomorrow. Have a great, great night, everybody. Thank you again for the support. Truly, bottom of my heart, um, means a lot to me. Every single one of you that comments, um, just it, it does. It really does. So have a great night, everybody. Enjoy your Friday. I will see you all tomorrow. And as always, go Mariners. Let's do this. Peace.